Hey folks, today we're going to talk about bonsai tools um, and the tools that I use uh, when I do my videos as well as some tools that I utilize for collecting and just basically everything that I feel that an intermediate, a beginner, or an advanced bonsai artist or hobbyist uh, should have in their arsenal for creating bonsai. We're going to start off right here. Um, I've had a few questions about my turntable and what it is and how I've made it, etc. So we're going to start here. What this is, is it's a cheap bar stool on the bottom. It's just a tubular steel bar stool. And it has a swivel underneath it. And uh, some bar stools have a swivel stop and a swivel stop. So when you get one of these, make sure you're getting one that 360 swivels. There's no obstructions underneath it. Uh, this piece on the top here, what this is, is just a round piece of pine that's just got several sections in it. Um, I got this at uh, one of the home improvement stores. Um, it was already cut. It's already a circle. Um, I don't think it was much more than $20. I got some carriage bolts, and I've carriage bolted through this into the mounting. You'll see there's four holes underneath the bar stool swivel piece where the bar stool actually screws to. Um, so I just removed the seat portion and I carriage bolted this straight to it. I used wood filler to fill in the excess holes. And then I did about six layers of, of acrylic enamel on top just to keep any water from penetrating into the wood. Um, works great for me. It's a decent height. I know um, they sell professional bonsai turntables uh, that are height adjustable and they have a stop on them. This one doesn't have a stop. Um, it doesn't seem to I don't necessarily need to stop on this because you know when you turn it, it stops, and that's that's good enough for me. Um, this is about a 24-inch diameter piece of wood on the top. I wouldn't recommend going quite much much larger than that um, because it makes the the thing unstable. If you need something larger than that, which quite a bit of times I do, what I have is a couple pieces of plywood that I've cut in a square, just slightly larger than the containers that I use. I'll put that down, and then I set the container on top of that, and it works perfect. Uh, so this is my large turntable. I also, what I started out with and what I would recommend for um, Mame and Shohin size trees, um, which is where I started out as I started out Shohin size trees and progressed up to what I have now. This is a relatively inexpensive turntable. I think these are around about $30. Um, you can get them pretty much anywhere online. Um, it's a small size turntable. The only difference between this one and the large one is this one does in fact have the stop and the stop is right here. It's just a little rod um, that you twist. You kind of tighten it up and it prevents it from turning and then you loosen it up again and it, and it spins freely. Um, it's a good and inexpensive way of getting yourself a turntable if all you're worried about is Shohan and Mome size trees. Um, if you're going to be getting into the larger stuff, like what I, I do, um, I would highly recommend making some type of, of larger turntable versus buying one. It's extremely simple. I put this together in a few hours' time, and that's, I mean, it is what it is. It's pretty much a turntable, relatively inexpensive, and it works great. Uh, if anybody has any other questions on these, feel free to get, let me know, and I will try to answer the best I can. Next, we're going to move on to tools. Okay, here we are at the tools, and get you a 30,000 foot view of all the tools that I use in my arsenal. Um, but we're going to start out here on this end, and the number one tool that I have in my, my arsenal is just a pair of pliers. Um, regular old pair of pliers. Doesn't matter how much you spend or how little you spend, these are actually passed down from my grandfather. They're probably older than me, uh, and a lot older than most of us. Um, they have a good, nice, wide head on the top. Not the perfect alignment in the world, you know. Just for grabbing wire, and when you need to, you know, when you're twisting, um, like for guy wiring or whatever, it's got a nice wide head for grabbing on. Somebody actually ground down one end of this and made it into a flathead screwdriver. But uh, pair of pliers, very essential tool in the arsenal. Next up, concave cutters. I have three different size concave cutters. This one actually is not a concave, it is a concave cutter, cutter but it is a little bit more special. Um, let's, we're going to start out on these two. This is like this seven and a half, I believe, to eight inch size, and this is what they refer to as 11 or 12 inch size. Um, this is what I initially recommend that you get. Um, as you can see, it's nice and everything lines up perfectly. Um, 
along here everything's nice and in line um, don't have to be real expensive tools a lot of times you're paying for the name versus the tool itself um, this is a good size for small and intermediate branches of most deciduous trees pine trees etc um, works well it's a very simple concept I think most people that do bonsai know what a con concave cover is um, this is a little bit larger size. Um, this is the 11, 12 inch size. This is for cutting a little bit larger caliber of branch. Um, has a lot longer handle and what have you. Um, I would recommend starting out with this size and then if you get into larger trees then moving up to the little bit larger caliber. Um, I've broke several pairs of these smaller ones trying to cut branches that are too large for for what they're designed for and that's why I ended up getting this. I've gone through about five or six pairs of these and finally said, you know what, for the amount of time I've and money I've wasted on this size, I could have had this size. So I went ahead and bought them. They work great. Both of these highly recommended. Start out here. Larger trees, you go here. Now if you have small trees or um, very thin barked trees, for instance, like a Satsuki Azalea, these right here, they, and they're fairly expensive. Um, it is a concave cutter, but it's called a spherical concave cutter. And the difference is when you turn it to the side, it has a rounded contour if you notice in cutting surface versus just a straight cutting surface and what this is designed for is on the thinner bark um, species of trees um, this gets down in there and makes a nice smooth transitional cut it makes like a almost like a bowl like you would have cereal in cut after you cut the branch off and that aids in healing down in there these concave cutters when you cut off a a branch or what have you. It has more of a V shape cut, I guess you could say, or a more of a angular cut um, for you know, deciduous trees like trident maples and Japanese maples and what have you. That that's fine because it'll callus over and it'll swell back out and all as well. But the finer, thinner barked species, the spherical concave cutter is a really nice tool and um, is well worth the investment. Now this is more of a, a specialized tool for you know the thinner bark species or more advanced tool for people doing advanced techniques I guess you could say in a way. Um, this pair right here was $120 so they are relatively expensive. Um, these here about 50 bucks, this is about 100 bucks. Next up what we have uh, knob cutters. This is the first pair of knob cutters I owned, the first pair I bought. Um, as you can see, they have like a rounded head on them. It's almost like a circular shape. Um, this again is like the eight inch, eight and a half inch. I'm not sure exactly what they classify it as nowadays. Um, and after you cut the branch off, this is used to get down in there and, and make the proper transition so the wound will heal over clean and, and nice and smooth or if you're going for the natural look, you can carve not notches in it, and when it heals over, it, it's more realistic or more reminiscent of a natural branch that was broke off in the wild, and then the tree healed itself over. Um, these are what I recommend you start out with. I think these are like the 8 inch, 8.5 inch, inch, something along those lines, knob cutter. Uh, of course, I also have the larger set as well, um, and again, it's a rounded head, and it's the same thing only on a larger scale. It's it's for um, large wound reduction. Um, this is a new pair I just recently picked up and if you look at these, these are more of like an egg shape versus the round and um, I'm going to be trying these out. It's the same concept just a little different design and um, same size as these. These are both considered I guess a seven and a half or the eight inch size so if you can't find the rounded ones that's fine you can utilize these I, mean, I believe these will work a little bit better just as good if not better um, their design will allow you to get down deeper into things and maybe down into um, a little bit tighter confines so that that's something fairly decent to have and, and something very good for the arsenal so um, next up wire cutters this is one of the if not the second or third item that you should purchase when you're first starting out because inevitably you're going to have a branch that needs to be wired. Well, you can't wire a branch without wire cutters because you can't cut the wire. Um, yes, the pliers do have a wire cutter on them if you notice and 90% of them do have that wire cutter right there at the bottom. But the problem is once you wire a tree and you wire it on a branch 
you need to cut the excess wire off the branch and you're not going to be able to do it with the pliers so you definitely need a wire cutter not only that but once you, the wire has been on the tree for enough time and the wire has set the branch and the branch starts growing over the wire you have to have something to remove it I don't ever unwind my wire I always cut it off with a wire cutter and it's got the cutter all the way to the very tip it is fairly narrow and it gets the job done. One of my favorite tools to use when I'm wiring, well, the only tool I use essentially when I'm wiring is basically this this tool right here, wire cutter. Not expensive, easy to get a hold of, very valuable tool.